Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Ist das die Ludwig Museum? Ja, ja. Ludwig der Zweite von Bayern. Ich hätte gern eine Eintrittskarte fürs Museum. Ja, 8 Mark für eine Ganztagskarte. So. Danke. Bitte. They certainly make an incredible looking couple. July 3rd, 1863. Elizabeth, you can have no idea, dear cousin, how happy you made me. The hours recently passed with you in the railway carriage I consider among the happiest in my life. Never will their memory fade. You gave me permission to visit you at Ischel, if the time comes for this ardent hope to be fulfilled, I shall be of all men upon earth the most blessed. The feelings of sincere love and reverence and faithful attachment to you, which I cherished in my heart even as a boy, makes me imagine heaven upon earth and will be extinguished by death alone. I beg you with all my heart to forgive the contents of this letter but I could not help myself. Ludwig. Elizabeth frequently gave Ludwig advice on royal conduct, hoping to protect him from unfavorable public opinion. March 1st, 1865. My dearest Eagle, you have not written me in a few months. I have missed you. I often try to imagine what you are doing. I hear tales that you have been on retreat and have not been seen in Munich for some time. I suspect it is this new friend you wrote up so mysteriously that takes you away from home. I hope you are enjoying yourself, my beloved, but I beg you to caution. The people need to see you at the throne. I also hesitate to suggest that what your officials do in your absence may not always be in your own best interest. You have always been a true king, but you must let the people see you to ensure that they don't forget that. E. Your dove. Ludwig's friends were concerned for his mental state long before his arrest. June 14, 1878. My beloved eagle, in your last letter you spoke so movingly of your torment that I was moved to tears. What is this torment? Why won't you confess to me what is truly troubling you? You must know that I would never despise you, no matter how horrible you believe your sins to be. Please do not write such barbs to my heart by even suggesting such things. If you do not wish to confess to me, at least tell me how I can aid you. I am always your true one, your dove. In this letter, dated November 1886, Elizabeth of Austria thanks Bishop Frank for his assistance in helping her fulfill Ludwig's last wishes. She writes that she knows it was an unusual request, but she believes Ludwig had reasons of his own for wishing it to be done. She hopes that his spirit finds peace at last. No further reference to this letter has ever been found. One can only speculate what the last wishes of a cornered and embattled Ludwig might have been. What were his last wishes? This place is giving me more questions than answers. She's beautiful. Elizabeth of Austria. One of Ludwig's few close friends was Empress Elizabeth of Austria. She was a distant cousin of the boy Prince, and he saw her often growing up. Graceful and beautiful, Elizabeth seemed to represent the feminine ideal to the younger Ludwig. 
Their friendship continued after her marriage, mainly by correspondence. She remained a source of stability for Ludwig throughout his life. In keeping with Ludwig's love of romance and drama, he called her the Dove, and he to her was the Eagle. Ludwig and Wagner. Ludwig loved the opera of his contemporary Richard Wagner. He helped support Wagner's music through much of his life. Ludwig considered Wagner a close friend, often calling him the great friend. Wagner encouraged this infatuation, some believe, for personal gain. Typical artist. He looks so regal. Why would he give up all of this pageantry and become a recluse? Ludwig, Grand Master of the Knights of St. George. There's got to be a connection between all this St. George stuff and Gabriel. Ludwig is Grand Master of the Knights of St. George. The Knights of St. George was an aristocratic society dedicated to the acts of chivalry. Ludwig loved the medieval pageantry of the order in his early years before his increasing reclusiveness drove him to abandon public appearances. I wonder if these pins have any symbolic meaning. Signets and sash pins from the order of the Knights of St. George. These were worn on Ludwig's uniform as befitted his rank of Grand Master. They are now the property of the Bavarian Crown Treasury. Looks like it weighs a ton. Ludwig's Grand Master Wardrobe from the Knights of St. George. Richard Wagner. Ludwig's Diary. Ludwig kept a diary from 1869 when he was 24 years old until his death. The diary provides a fascinating look into the mind of this tormented man. The original diary is kept in the Royal Archives. A few entries are shown on the opposite wall. I've got to see that diary. Even after Wagner's death, Ludwig still showed signs of obsession with the composer. This letter, written in 1882 by Ludwig to the conductor of the Munich Opera, instructs the conductor to make preparations for a new Wagner opera. The conductor went to see the king as instructed. When he arrived, Ludwig was ill and refused to see him. Nothing further was ever heard of this mysterious new opera. Was it a figment of an ill man's desperate wishes? Hmm. Ludwig is offered a crown of laurels by the genius of immortal fame. 26 July 1874. By the power of the lily, we shall have the strength to resist all temptations throughout the whole year. 26 July 1875. Solemn oath before the picture of the great king. Refrain for three months from all excitement. This oath has its binding power as well as its potency by de par le roi. LNR, DPLR. What excitement! I need to see more of that diary!